the DPMS AK. I'm going to explain a theory I have on that and we'll do a table talk look at the new anvil from DPMS coming up next on GB Guns. First things first, about that what the heck question everybody just asked. <laughs> DPMS was an AR maker, went out of business, the brand was bought, and now they're back with an AK? How does that make sense? Well, I have a theory on that, and that is the holding company that purchased the DPMS brand also owns Palmetto State Armory. Noticing the stamp on the bottom of this, this thing's made in South Carolina, which tells me this is a DPMS or this is a PSA rifle. Why would PSA do something like that? Well, that lets them sell their rifles, their AKs, to retailers and have guns at a different price point under a different name available at mom and pop gun stores like you and I all go to without directly competing with their own PSA branded stuff. Also, hopefully, this lets them pick a formula for a build and stick with it because man, those PSA AKs seem to be changing what they're using, all their features, all the time. And I swear it's like they build 500 of them, sell them, and then never build that same SKU again. The next iteration has something different on it and you can't ever find the old things. So why do we have one? Well, we bought one of PSA's AKPs a year or two ago and love it. Beautifully built, incredible fit and finish, just a spectacular AK, great performer. Uh, they really did their homework on it. So I have a high opinion of the PSA AKs. Miss Tia fell in love with a Plum AK when we were at Center T and wanted that furniture. She also didn't have an AK rifle of her own. So when I saw this come about, it seemed like a perfect combination. Get her an AK with plum furniture, get her her own AK, and get her hands on one of these anvils to take a look and see how they run with the hopes and thoughts that it'll be just like a regular PSA AK. I do also want to show off the manual that came with it because it's very, very well done. Those who watch the channel much know that I always go through manuals because, well, sometimes there's something in there you need to know, but also it's sort of an indicator of how well a company wants you to understand the gun. The better you use to understand the gun, the better time you're going to have with it. I think the more effort that goes into a manual tends to indicate more effort spent on the gun. Probably the most exhaustive, visually explained field stripping process that I've ever seen for an AK. Very nicely done. There was one bit in, oh, and you get a DPMS sticker. Um, one bit in here that I was a little shocking, but considering that these guys were AR guys, maybe it makes more sense to them. Cleaning. No less than once a week if the rifle is not used. Oil should be placed regularly. <laughs> um, they must have been thinking of AR guys because <laughs> who cleans an AK once a week when they're not using it? Wow. All right, <laughs> enough with that stuff. Let's take a look at the build and see what this new DPMS anvil is all about. Of course, one of the major benefits to 100% US made AKs is you don't have to worry about 922R compliance. You can swap all kinds of foreign parts onto it and not have to worry about counting how many parts are American and how many aren't. Starting off on the end, we've got the classic spoon style brake, but I want you to notice the fit and finish is very nice, very rich, and then you see this. The cleaning rod was smashed in, which tends to happen, there's some force, but so, so hard that it actually removed metal from the edge of the rod, which has curled up out the other side of the hole and is creating this burr here. That, not ideal, but uh, okay. So we've got uh, polymer hand guards, of course, all polymer furniture. Is there a heat guard not below? We'll take a look and find out. Take a look at our rivets. They're all sitting nice and happy. We do have an optics rail, which I appreciate. It's a classic style magazine release. Trigger, all classic furniture, very lightweight polymer, and it does have the trap door in the buttstock for the cleaning kit. One was not included, which is kind of a bummer, 
but uh, I don't know if there's a US maker of those. You kind of have to get the surplus stuff for that. So I thought that was pretty cool, and it included one of PSA's polymer mags. This does have metal reinforcement in it, and his waffle pattern. There's your PSA stamp down there. So, so far so good. When it came to mags, I was just curious, based on the way this one fit, how others would fit. It's normally something we do on the range video, and if we do a range video on this, because this is TS personal gun, um, we'll definitely go full length through it. But mag fitment, always been an issue, right? If a lot of import guns come with this opening set for a single stack mag or a different magazine to keep it low capacity, and in the US they open it up. One of the neat things we've seen done with other US AR makers is cutting it to their magazines, which it certainly seems uh, PSA DPMS has done here. However, whenever there's a cut or an alteration, that does affect the way other mags fit. And I wanna show you what happened. Grabbed our favorite AK mag, which is these US Palms with the metal reinforcement, and it won't lock. It does not fit. We have a bunch of these. So for recreational shooting, that's a bummer. Never had an issue with these US Palm mags in any other AKs. Grabbed a Eastern European polymer mag. I think this is Bulgarian. No reinforcements, just a lightweight thing. Fits in very nicely. So if it takes some but not others, what about a standard Yugoslav surplus bolt hold open steel mag? Once again, it won't lock. It feels as if there's too much room before this ledge that it needs a shorter ledge. And you notice on the PSA, it has a bottom limiter too. So it hooks and then there's this bottom limiter, which is not on regular magazines. But my P mag, for all of you, here is a P mag. Locks with a lot of pushing. This is not one of the reinforced ones, this is an earlier one. It needs extra force at the end. So something in the dimension there is not quite right. And for something as simple as magazine compatibility, that is a little bit worrisome. Next to show you the insides of the gun, I will field strip it. And to the YouTube nannies, this is field stripping. It is end user maintenance as depicted in the manual that I just showed. I'm not creating or modifying the gun at all. Pushing it on that button, we're able to lift off our dust cover. I love the ribbed ones. I know that's a personal preference. Some people like it smooth, some people like it ribbed. Pull it up and out for our recoil assembly. And now we can bring our carrier straight to the rear and out and take a look at the guts. Nice thing, they've got a um, pin retainer plate in there. Interesting that they used a twisted wire trigger spring see how stiff, oh that was loose, not stiff at all to be able to get our gas tube off. Not necessarily a good or bad thing, just something that I prefer because I hate fighting with them. Snugly fit, so that was nicely fit. And you can see we do have a heat shield in that lower handguard, which is nice. And beautifully coated barrel. I and mean, the finish on these is excellent, just like the PSA. Of course, now it doesn't want to lock down. The piston is domed. You can see a little bit of carbon from test firing there, and a little bit of wobble, as always, but uh, beautifully chromed, and that should be very easy to clean. I did notice we've got some tooling marks on our carrier like to show them along there. Not a big deal. And you can see some finish wear already from the test firing. The cam path for the bolt is very smooth. And you can see they cut, did like an extra pass in there to make that nice and deep and easy for her. The bolt firing pin is free floating and we have a chromed extractor. So overall, things look pretty nice. I'm hoping this is gonna turn out well, uh, since it was a gift for Ms. Tia. <laughs> 
and she's always wanted uh, a plumbed AK and needed an AK of her own. When we get out to the range, if we do a range video with this, we'll see a full mag compatibility test uh, running through a wide variety of magazines. And then uh, we'll do some accuracy. It's nice that we have a scope rail on there so we can put an optic on it and see how well this shoots. It's kind of fun seeing the expansion of US made AKs and I cannot do that blindly. Uh, all parts serialized together. So the top cover has the same serial as the bolt and carrier and receiver, which is nice. Made as a matching set. Used to be highly desirable with the surplus kits to try to get a matching set surplus rifle. Of course, with something being made entirely in the US, it should be matched. But uh, another thing I noticed, safety does not catch. Doesn't get snagged up top there, which is really cool. I don't see the standard little divot or dimple that gets put in there to help make sure that happens. But the safety moves nice and freely and has the American friendly ledge so you can do it with your trigger finger without having to reach your whole hand around. So overall on build quality, fit and finish, the DPMS Anvil looks pretty nice. Looks just like a PSA AK. A few minor concerns, but uh, time will tell if that's a big deal or not. If you've picked one of these up or know somebody who has, let us know in the comments sections what their experience has been. So far, seems like a pretty good rifle. Thanks for watching.